welcome to the History Hunters. Britain, a peaceful landscape of golden corn, wheat and of course an abundance of wildlife lives in our countryside. As the farmers of today harvest their crops, I wonder how many of them realise that they are carrying on a tradition that had lasted for many thousands of years. From earliest times, Man has used the land for hunting and providing food and clothing for his people. Flint arrowheads such as this one here, recovered from the earth, would have been used to hunt animals for survival. The countryside that we can see today is the direct result of the first farmers from the Neolithic and the Bronze Age. Whilst farming communities carry on with their day-to-day -day lives, there is no doubt that evidence of our ancestors still lies awaiting discovery in the soils that lay across Britain. Earth, home to life and mankind, and orbiting our sun for many millions of years. Our planet has developed and changed to what we see today, and from space we get to see Earth in its entirety. Through modern technology, satellites enable us to view vast continents and to observe life from afar. Britain itself is constantly monitored, giving us vital information about the weather and more importantly, climatic change. Since man first roamed the earth, he has seen the climate change throughout the ice ages and periods of relatively warm and damp weather, and he has continued to adapt and to survive. Early man often inhabited caves for shelter, and these cave paintings are typical of the evidence left behind of his existence. Wonderful monuments to his existence, such as Stonehenge, are a constant reminder of his presence across the ancient landscape of Britain. Funeral pyres were used to cremate the dead, as well as burials, often in a crouched or fetal position, and many levelled with grave goods for their long journey ahead. Much of Stonehenge still stands even to this day and the mystery of this great monument attracts many thousands of people every year to witness both the summer and winter solstice. Mm. 
This area of wetland had been a great interest to me for some time, as it was ideal as a hunting ground in prehistoric times. What I needed was to find evidence that ancient man had indeed been here. Almost immediately, I found a large piece of flint that had clearly been napped by our ancestors many thousands of years ago. As flint does not occur naturally in this part of England, then the only explanation could be that it had been brought here back in ancient times. It wasn't long before this evidence was found in quantity scattered across the plough soil of the fields in the surrounding area. It was now clear that prehistoric man had indeed been living here some 6,000 years ago and beyond. I continued with my field walking and within minutes I recovered yet another work flint implement that had clearly been crafted by prehistoric man during the Neolithic period. Here was clear evidence that I had discovered an area of land that was once home to our ancient ancestors. Such artefacts as this beautiful polished stone axe would have been commonplace during these times. This landscape was clearly ancient and the question now was did ancient man live here at the site some 6,000 years ago? If he did, was it true that his ancestors were also buried here during prehistoric times? In the late 19th century the landscape was to change forever with the construction of the Manchester Ship Canal. For many years, navvies worked day in and day out digging the canal. Many lived close to the excavation in small huts constructed out of any materials that they could find. On the 1st of January 1894, the canal was opened officially by Her Majesty Queen Victoria. Manchester was now connected directly to the Irish Sea and the rest of the world. The construction of many bridges took place along the length and breadth of the canal, allowing people to cross over from north to south. Even today, tankers still use the canal on their journeys inland. From the air, it is clear to see how the construction of the canal severed what I believe to be the Bronze Age burial ground from the area of settlement that once existed here. No longer is it possible to walk from the settlement straight to the burial ground. But still, much evidence of our ancestors lies awaiting discovery in the soils that surround this ancient settlement. The landscape still shows signs of early settlement. It is possible that there once existed roundhouses such as this one at the site. A beautiful flint arrowhead and a scraper used to remove the skins from wild animals caught during a successful day's hunting. Just look at the dedication and workmanship that was applied to create such a wonderful flint artefact some 6,000 years ago and all recovered locally during my research into the ancient past of the area. Flint napping was an acquired skill handed down from father to son was essential in the production of flint tools and blades needed for hunting and day-to-day -day life and survival in prehistoric Britain. Just look at the detail in this piece of black flint. Blades were removed from this flint core and used throughout the community. Prehistoric trade routes had existed for many thousands of years across Britain and Europe and this diminutive bronze axe from the Bronze Age is proof of trade at that time. If we were to recover evidence quickly of ancient man at the site, then we would need to enlist the help of this extra resource to help collect flint tools from the surface before the field was once again seeded. All of the evidence recovered during the field walk was taken back to archaeological headquarters for analysis by Nick Herapath, Fines liaison officer in northwest England. But still, much evidence of our ancestors lies awaiting discovery in the soils that surround this ancient settlement. Well, it's um, 
classic Neolithic polished axe head, <laughs> but it's um, it's quite massive. It must have taken quite a lot of effort to use it, and some some of the very large ones, um, they. The suggestion is that they might not have actually been used as axes for chopping uh, wood or trees or whatever, and that they might have been just purely ceremonial. <laughs> um, basically, it's a smaller one of these, same period. I mean, still a, a sort of Neolithic polished axe head. I mean, this is absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful one. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. I mean, this is the sort of thing you'd expect more likely to have been used. I mean, you could probably use this all day without getting worn out, whereas probably after an hour or so of using that, you'd be yeah. shattered. And, and also, the, you'd have to have quite a hefty haft. My, my wife was well yeah. built when she was using that. <laughs> 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 Two-handed. Two yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I think they've done, they've done experiments trying to chop down trees using, using these types of things. And actually, they, you can do it very quickly. Couple of people using these with, on a tree, mm. smallish tree, not a great big oak or anything. Yeah, and you can actually work quite quickly with them. Could that have yeah. actually come out of a burial site? Um, again, difficult to say. Um, they do occur in burials, but um, more likely just to have been a stray loss. Yeah, yeah. If the stitching yeah. in these days was so bad that all these bits were mm. falling out. Of people's back pockets. <laughs> There's no reason why that shouldn't have fallen out uh, as a, as a exactly, casual yeah. loss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's more likely to be a casual it. loss. Yeah. But the yeah. exciting thing was mm. that that was found and was interesting from the bottom of this trench. It was thrown into the back of a van mm. and then washed and thrown into the back of a wardrobe. Mm. And mm. it stayed there for 20 years until mm. an arrowhead was discovered mm. and published in the press. Mm. And there was a, this chap's daughter phoned up and said, we've got it, mm. do you think mm. it's of any interest? Mm. And uh, one of our members went down to follow it up, mm. Mm. and that's the result, and it's gorgeous. It's great, yeah, I mean, it makes you wonder what else is lying around in people's houses. Yes. That's definitely um, an artefact, and may even be an arrowhead. Um, that's, it's been flaked mm. all over. You can see all the yeah. small pressure flakes all over it to shape it, and probably mounted like that in the arrow shaft. So that probably would have been the killing end of the arrow, rather than it being like that. Oh! So it would have been a flat sort of that. transverse arrowhead. Yeah. <laughs> so. I never imagined it. That way. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it's it's hard. It's hard to say whether these actually are Mesolithic, so whether they mm. were from the hunter-gatherer period. I mean, the, yeah. I think some of these are probably um, from the later Neolithic. So there was no doubt that I had discovered yet another previously unknown ancient site in the area. This site clearly dated from the Neolithic period some 6,000 years ago. Stone Age man had lived here and hunted the floodplains in search of wild animals to feed his family.